Captain Ron Johnson gives a heartwarming speech this morning after a night of violence caused by the police on a peaceful protest. Is this man really out for the people like the media, the police force, and Missouri government say he is? We'll see about that on the Ottawa Expo. Good evening, everyone. This is Justin on this 17th of August of 2014. Um, So just a big welcome, actually, to um, my new subscribers. I I noticed that there was a pretty big influx in the past few days. Um, So basically, I cover pretty much everything uh, New World Order. Um, I believe that the Ferguson uh, incident uh, could be a um, massive... Uh, opportunity for them to gain some ground um, by ways of police state and and, uh, control amongst the people by force. Um, So if you're new, and especially if you are just first waking up to uh, what you could possibly be uh, be believing as media lies, then uh, welcome. Um, There's a whole bunch of channels that I have uh, on my channel list as well. Uh, You go through my videos, you can uh, get started from there and move uh, on to other people. Um, but today I'd like to talk about, um, the Ron Johnson speech this morning. Um, so basically this is our guy that, um, after all the strife, uh, was starting to reach a, a peak in Ferguson. This guy was brought in. Now he is, uh, from the highway patrol, the captain there, and, uh, he's from Ferguson. So they put him in as an obvious PR move. Um, and, uh, this guy was introduced, um, with candor by the governor of Missouri, um, Mr. Jay Nixon. Now, this is the guy that uh, 24 hours ago just uh, promised us that during the curfew, there would be no heavy-handed tactics to enforce the situation. There would be no tear gas, no tanks. But sure enough, um, I don't know if you saw the the footage from last night. Um, I have a whole bunch of links in one of my previous videos that you can go to and see that. Um, basically that was what they did within not even an hour of the curfew. Um, so basically they said they weren't going to be heavy handed, but once people disobeyed the curfew, well, they got right down to business and said exactly, or did exactly the opposite of what they said they were going to do. They made a liar out of the governor. And, um, I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm really upset with this. I mean, of course, I shouldn't be expecting them to tell the truth, but um, this one is, is extremely backhanded. So they say no tear gas. Um, so people don't come prepared for it, right? And uh, when then the push comes to shove, which was entirely from what I see on the police side, um, they said that they had people coming up aggressively to them that were armed, which it doesn't matter. We'll get into that later. Um, but uh, people have Second Amendment rights in America, so um, I don't think that's a reason to fire upon them in any uh, shape or form. There were also bullets that were fired last night. The uh, the police department obviously um, denies ever firing those. They said that it was probably from another protester. One person was seriously injured. Um, um, so let's pray for him, make sure, or her, sorry, I, I, I don't know. I didn't catch the gender as they didn't identify it. So whoever that was, let's please pray for them. Um, but it's, um, it was a very upsetting situation yesterday. I was almost at a loss of words when I made that video. Um, and it, of course it was in the middle of the night after everything happened. So anyways, um, basically there is uh, this Ron Johnson that, you know, he's uh, here and I have the clip um, of Dabu7 put it up. So I'll put the link there, but you can see it there. Uh, that's the video that you can look that up for yourself. Um, and I'll have the link. But basically he's there. He's comparing himself to Peter uh, from, you know, the biblical story of Peter failing and Jesus picking him up. I mean, uh, how heartfelt it was, how he has a son, a black son, as he mentioned to state very clearly, like I've been saying in my other videos, they are playing race on all sides here. It's a very um, uh, solid front by the media and the authorities. They're playing the race. This is all they're addressing um, for the most part. 
and uh, they're not looking at the reality of the situation that the authoritarian um, atmosphere by police all around all different countries, not just Ferguson or America, but everywhere around the world, they're heading in this direction. So this is uh, one of the biggest problems with it, and they're not addressing it at all. They're trying to play it all down to race. Um, and a lot of people are buying it. A lot of people are seeing through it, though. So, I mean, I, I really think there's a lot of people waking up. So that's, a, uh, that's great. Um, but this Ron Johnson guy, I mean, he comes in as the, uh, the I call him Captain uh, Conflict Resolution um, for the fact that, I mean, he comes in and he talks all these sweet words. Um, he had a lot of people backing him at that speech, too. And but, you know, he's disconnected from the actions of the police force in the nighttime. So like they've named him head of security, even though it was more like security for the protesters. So what happens is they have him completely disconnected from the police forces in the nighttime. So he can't take any of the heat and he gets to um, really um, sell the emotions back to the crowd to try and win them back over. Uh, it's, I think it's a really sly tactic. Um, and I think a lot of people are seeing that, but, um, I, here's a little bit of evidence. Uh, Amerishima picked this up, uh, yesterday, Amerishima 2012. And, uh, we'll play this clip here now, but as you can see, when she start asking questions outside of the race factor and stuff like that, the real questions, um, then, you know, you're going to see a, a big difference in his character and, uh, the thing is, these are the questions that need to be answered um, because, I mean, everybody's addressing the, the race question. He doesn't, you know, like it, it should be a given, you know, but when it comes to the security of people, he was asked a direct question about the safety of those who are going to stay over curfew and he just completely walks away. Um, so, I mean, it's uh, up for you to uh, decide on that, um, whether or not... Um, <laughs> You know, he really is genuine. I mean, he can talk as much as he'd like, but in the end, talk is cheap. So take a look at this video, and uh, I'll see you now in a moment. I was up to Milwaukee. We sent uh, uh, five black troopers up to uh, Wisconsin to find out how we can start recruiting more black officers and more uh, minority officers. And so we were in Wisconsin this past week, and he let us all go up there, and we talked to other we talk to other state agencies to uh, try to get that figured out and what we can do to get uh, more minorities into law enforcement and be more reflective of the communities we serve. And so I know agencies are doing that. You know, we need we do that. And, you know, probably one thing I've learned from this, you know, we do a lot of things on the highway patrol to try to make that happen. And we probably need to put that out. But we have a lot of recruiters that go out to the middle schools in St. Louis County. And if you know somebody in the middle school system or high school, and they'd like the Highway Patrol to come out, we will send recruiters out, we'll send to talk to them, take them literature, and we'll continue to do that, okay? Here's the thing, I look, I look at trends. Mm -hmm. And if you look back, you know, there are numerous African Americans that have seemed to be um, gotten shot and died and been unarmed. So it's a problem. So what we're doing right now, the current policies and procedures that are in place, I don't think they're necessarily working. Yeah. And so the NAACP pointed out there needs to be a point of pivot. And I see it on both ends, right. on both parts. I, I was talking to uh, the officer right here and I was telling him, you know, about you all's uh, diversity training. Yeah. It would really be helpful if we got people from the community to come in and help out with that. Because, you know, a lot of them don't know what it's like to be me. So if we can, so if we can, if we can bring that to the forefront, then maybe that will help and cut down on any of these other young children being gunned down and being misunderstood or, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, I definitely agree. You know, so that's a good idea. And we need to, it needs to come from the top down because I've been yeah. writing officials telling them about the issue. What are we going to do about it? I'm willing to meet. I'm willing to go to Washington. I'm willing to go and meet with you. Uh, governor and that's why I think it's good that our colonel's out here. He's our top guy and he's hearing this You know and the chief is out here in St. Louis County So that it's good that they're out here hearing those things to make those changes. Okay. okay All right So Kevin Johnson are you prepared to if people don't leave the area like make mass arrests tonight? Let's not talk about okay. Worst case and do you feel we're like there needs to be a federal investigation into the entire Ferguson Police Department? We're not just this case fine tonight. All right, we're ready So there you have it, folks. I mean, it seems like you have a person or a captain, a head of security, 
actually. That's what he's been named. Um, who, who will, and I mean, don't get me wrong. There's three officers out of the 53 who are black in a place that it's 67 to 70% black. I mean, that's a problem, obviously. Um, it does need to be addressed. But this seems to be the only thing that he's really bringing up is the race card. Once someone asks him, Something that's not on his uh, cue cards of uh, frequently asked questions to actually answer. Um, you should, well, I mean, you saw the reaction he gave. It was first, just take a look at his hand when he like, he kind of pushes him away um, first and then just puts his hand on his shoulder and is like, you know, now you be a good, you, you be a good boy. Come on now. Come on now, there's no need to ask something like that. I mean, I'm only the person appointed as the head of security for the protesters. That's, you know, there's no reason to bring up something like that. So that's what you see there. Um, I think it's pretty, pretty ridiculous. And I mean, well, you saw what happened. It was not even an hour. It was about 45 minutes into the curfew. They started shooting out uh, what they say is smoke and tear gas. Um, so smoke bombs they shot out. And originally, uh, we'll see this now in an article I'm about to bring up. They say that, uh, it's only, uh, they only, they said originally, sorry, that it was only smoke bombs. And I would, I would assume this is because, you know, they said they wouldn't use tear gas, but in fact, they did then admit afterwards that they did use tear gas. So they knew exactly what they were doing. They knew exactly what they were doing. And that's why I think they uh, said differently at first. But uh, from the accounts, when you saw the, um, the videos, I mean, a few of them were behind the lines and they were put into a staged area zone for the media, um, which is another thing that a lot of people don't know. A lot of those photographers, they were subject to arrest just by not being in that staged area. But the people who were, were able to cover or uh, capture at around, I think, 42 minutes into the curfew, you could hear them saying gas, gas, gas. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if the, the thing is for even for smoke bombs, they would say gas, gas, gas. Um, so you can let me know about that. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure when they say that you're looking for uh, tear gas, not just smoke bombs. So, I mean, the lies keep going on and on and on. You had governor the governor of Missouri say there would be no tear gas. Then you have the head of, uh, it's Mr. Lotz, a constable or uh, Sergeant Lotz, I believe. And he's talking um, about there being none of it used. And then they come out and say, yeah. I mean, when do the lies end? When are we going to realize? When, when is everybody going to realize this is not to do about race, but the, the way that the police can think they can conduct themselves? They use that press release for the curfew as a way to fool the public. This is by definition a PSYOP. Okay, they are pulling out all the stops here, folks. Um, the And I'll, I'll show you um, a good example of it. I mean, um, here on CBC, now it's, I know it's Canadian, but once you take, uh, if you take a look at it here, it's straight copy and paste from Re uh, Reuters as well as um, the Associated Press. Now, if you're not familiar with that, those are basically the two main companies where all the media outlets really um, just uh, get all their sources from and then they just regurgitate it onto you with their own left spin or right spin or anti-American or pro-American or whatever spin they want to put on it. But it basically all comes from that, from those two main sources. And the Canadian press, as you see there, is uh, just like the affiliate, the, uh, like, you know, good like google.ca instead of .com, you know, that kind of thing. Um, basically, this is the main title for, for today on CBC News about it. It's uh, not talking about the tear gas, even the uh, showing that Governor Nixon lies, doesn't mention that whatsoever in the article. What they will show you are the reasons why they use the tear gas. Um, so they start, and I'm just going to go down a little bit further down because uh, the first bit of this article is talking about, you know, funeral arrangements, uh, uh, autopsies, whatnot, right? So that's, uh, well, I mean, it's very important. Don't get me wrong. I mean, God rest his soul, but, um, it, I just find it interesting how that's how they run their headliner, uh, today after, uh, all the turmoil that happened yesterday or last night. Um, so starts off here. I'm just going to start at Ferguson has been the scene of looting and street battles between police and protesters since Brown was shot by a white police officer while talking while walking down a street of the St. Louis suburb on August 9th. 
Um, so as you can see here, it goes right away into the scene of looting and street battles. Not peaceful protests. It's not trying to let you know about people that are genuinely um, disenchanted by the media and the police authorities and the way that they've been conducting themselves. No, this is about looting and street battles. Um, seven people were arrested early Sunday morning as police used smoke and tear gas against protesters who defied a curfew. I'm going to show you that they say smoke first. Um, that's a very big constant from what I've been seeing all around the media. Nobody's really addressing that um, the governor went back on its word. Uh, essentially, um, but they're gonna. But they put the smoke in in front of the tear gas. I know it seems like I'm, you know, nitpicking a little bit, but you know, those are the little things that they look for, and you can see these constants. Uh, you know, almost a little bit more frequently than in a lot of the other false flags that you see, right? Um, not saying that this is a false flag uh, from the get go, but uh, just just saying. Um, police deployed armored vehicles, another thing that they said that they weren't going to use in the streets just after the start of the overnight five-hour curfew. And it wasn't really just after. I mean, they, they really didn't make much action until about half an hour in they started making announcements. Um, in one tense situation late Saturday, a man with a handgun went into the street as the police were nearing a restaurant, but soon ran from the scene. A man was shot and critically wounded in the same area. Um... Police were searching for the shooter. Someone shot at a police car. It wasn't clear if it was hit. Now, I mean, these this is all conjecture. Like, I mean, it's um, you you hear all these different claims. There's hardly ever any evidence that backs it up. I mean, it's just one big lie or fallacy after another that we're we're supposed to take for uh, you know uh, face value. Um, Okay, and then it goes on to um, saying hundreds of other protesters left peacefully before the curfew took effect, uh, but remaining protesters chanting no justice, no curfew refused to leave the area, just showing the juxtaposition. They left peacefully, you know, not that anybody who stayed were being peaceful or anything like that. And they were, by the way, they were completely peaceful, except for a couple, you know, people that you can throw in. But for the most part, these people were peaceful and they were staying. It, it was well within what I believe were their rights. Screw the curfew. They have rights granted to them as Americans. Um, as officers put on the gas mask, a chant from the distant crowd emerged. We have the right to assemble peacefully. Oh, yes, you do, guys. A moment later, police began firing canisters into the crowd of protesters. Um, Highway Patrol spokesman, Lieutenant John Hotz, sorry, he was a lieutenant, <laughs> sorry about that, uh, said, initially said police only use smoke, like I said before, but later told the Associated Press that they also fired tear gas canisters. And I mean, you know what? All you had to do, anybody who was releasing the information, was to watch the live feeds. But you know what? It wasn't on the corporate media, so I guess that's why that didn't happen, did it? Um, and then here, here's my favorite part about this article. Cause it, it, I know this isn't Canadian exclusive. This is actually from the Associated Press, but they didn't have to do any type of changes to this part. That's for sure. Jason Ross, who was the lead, who was leading the protesters towards police before the canisters were fired, before the canisters were fired, said they got guns. We got guns. We are ready. This is completely misleading. There was nobody leading anybody towards the protesters before canisters were fired. They were peacefully staying there. This is ridiculous. All you have to do is take a look at the footage. That's all you have to do. Um, as with, they got guns, we got guns, we are ready. I mean, that's the perfect statement. Everybody in Canada is going to buy that up and love the taste of it. Just hearing that fear porn of guns, you know, not like Americans have Second Amendment rights. There's nothing wrong with having the guns on the street. As long as they're not killing people with it, they are not committing a crime. They have a Second Amendment right. <laughs> and it's, it's, I, I just find it hilarious how easy it is to sell that to the Canadian media. You know, they just love having that in there. Uh, Governor Jay Nixon, the liar himself on Saturday, declared a state of emergency in Ferguson. The length of the curfew would be judged by the community, Nixon said in CNN's State of the Union. Uh, he said Saturday curfew helped maintain peace. Yeah, well, that's not what I saw at all. Um, when I was looking at those videos and guys take a look at it uh, if you get a chance I uh, have all the links on my video just before this one um, so you can see it there um, all right so I mean as for that that's basically what they're trying to get at here is they're trying to um, 
villainize the protesters. Um, one, one more thing I just wanted to show I just kind of missed. Um, where in that same comment with the they got guns, we got guns, they're talking about Jason Ross, who was leading the protesters. Okay, so they didn't say some of the protesters or a number of the protesters. They didn't say the majority of the protesters. They just said the pro uh, protesters. They painted everybody in the same brush and it didn't matter if it was, you know, um, uh, an agent or provocateur. It didn't really matter. They just they put it all in the same group. Now, what they don't talk about is when there was a fire from somebody throwing a Molotov cocktail somehow, when there was a fire at uh, it was a. Was it a sushi place? Uh, chop suey? Yeah, it was a chop suey place. Um, there was a fire that broke out. A bunch of protesters went and put out the fire. I mean, these guys are not um, doing anything but doing peaceful protests, at least that group. I mean, the, and now there's talks that the looters, um, the store owners are saying that they don't even know who these guys are. They're not from this town. Um, so, I mean, you have a, you have a town of 21,000 or 22,000. I mean, I, I'm from a place that is almost that size just outside where I live. And, you know, people know everybody around there. I mean, for the most part, I mean, you can't know 22,000 people, but, um, you know, it, it, that atmosphere there, it's like, you know, who's from out of town. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's looking to me guys, like there is a lot of, um, fear porn right now headed towards you know the race um the race didn't seem to be as prevalent in this article um as i had shown in a previous video as well um cbc went all out at one point and you know what for for trying to incite that kind of stuff um i mean they they really sh there should be some reprimand this this cannot you can't just do that like just incite people's hatred towards each other to cause division because that's basically what this is and um, Take a look. I'm just going to show you a couple of the comments that I saw on a YouTube uh, on a sorry a Yahoo article and um, These people are completely fixated on race um, They've been pushed by the media to talk about it half of these comments are probably from some hate bot or like some robot That's just putting out messages to incite that type of division and that's exactly what this is as as soon as we are divided folks from race or gender whatever you know and we're not looking at the big problem that is um when we know they've won okay and i see it you know i see a lot of people that are awake to that but we still have to you know we have to look at that um and be much more careful um that this doesn't take over our thoughts our actions uh and our contribution to <sighs> changing the system in the way that the real issue is police have way too much power. They are given way too much force or uh, ability to use force and, um, and to exercise it. It's just, this needs to stop. And the media and all the fronts are pushing out all the stop to get you not to be able to see that. There is a bigger picture here, guys. I, I understand that, you know, race is a big factor here. There is a big inequality within Ferguson and many other places in the United States. But we need to start focusing on these things as a whole. White versus black is not going to work anymore because no matter who thinks they have it worse, you know, I'm <laughs> like, no matter what. It's all going to happen to us soon enough if we don't get to our, get our act together. This is going to be a regular occurrence. Okay, they've been training with the same people who are doing this to Gaza over and over and over. They're trained by the IDF. You know, they have the same tactics, the same equipment. You know, they're ready to use it on us. Um, it's about time that we got informed, we got together, realized that we were all brothers and sisters. And... Um, Let's look forward from there and exposing um, these liars for what they are. There's only one true enemy here, guys. One direction. Thank you very much. Have a good day.